you seeing how um, this knife gets on with um, sorting out that nice piece of beef. It's um, silver side, it's 14.3 um, pound in weight. And the length of the, uh, <laughs> the baby is there. Two feet, just over 60 inches long. So we've got a fair bit of meat to get through. Um, I've been using this every day since I got it. I think probably two months ago, something like that. And I use it every single day. Um, you just see me um, touch it up on the ceramic on the bottom of a coffee mug, which is I've been doing it this way probably about a year now. And uh, I will do it on another video with a few other sharpening ideas. But I just want to see how a little blade gets some with something so big. The blade's been washed. The hands have been washed. Everything's nice and clean. And uh, yeah, without further ado, we'll see. Man, I don't think we're gonna have no problem at all, even in reverse combat grip. Wow. No problem. No problem whatsoever, which is good. Just because you've got a little knife doesn't mean to say it can do big things. Um, I think around there it do. to show you don't need huge great big knives to do things like this as long as you keep your knives nice and sharp it's pretty cool incidentally that great big lump of beef cost me 40 pound English money so I'm not sure what it is um, to the pound I haven't worked it out yet but that's just how I tend to do things buy it in bulk um, chop it all up and all I'm gonna do now is just to um, shrink wrap it put it in the freezer because that will stop all of the um, the air and moisture get into the meat and freezing and getting freezer burn. So in theory, once this is um, shrink wrapped down, that could stay in the freezer, I don't know, three years, it'd be fine. I mean, I could be wrong, but this lasts a hell of a lot longer if you just put it in a carrier bag and just put it in the freezer. It wouldn't be too good. So let's get her shrink wrapped up. All I do is um, I'll put it forward a bit more and double seed it just to make sure. There you go, on the bottom there, there are two heat seal lines now just to give it a bit more protection if it does weaken in some way. Well, there it is, a piece I chopped up earlier with that little um, 511 uh, knife. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't believe it, but yeah, went straight through it as you saw. So, all I'm going to be doing, as I said, just put it inside. It was just about to put in there, because uh, she's a bit of a beast. I may have cut this a little bit too long, but hey. Right, what you do now is the top of the bag, um, the piece is unsealed, obviously goes into the trough piece because if there is any moisture or excess fluids it's just going to run into there rather than just making a big mess of your vacuum sealer and you don't want that believe me you don't want that so we just close it down there um, I'm gonna put it on normal and I'm gonna put it on moist and vacuum and seal <laughs> Go. All ready to go in the uh, freezer for as long as you want, and uh, it's pretty much sucked out all of the air that needed to be sucked out of there. 
So it's just going to enhance its um, shelf life, really. Well, this is the second lump now out of the three. And um, we're just going to select the same thing normal and moist, vacuum and seal. Number two, as you can see, it's really taken loads of air out of there, making it perfect for storage. I don't know if you actually see it, but I actually pulled it towards the machine. It's got such a powerful suction pump in there. Um, yeah, you can get um, vacuum sealer machines, quite cheap, but don't make that mistake because I bought one for about 30, 30 pound, I think it was, and it was useless. I mean, I should imagine halls suck a lot better than that. It was just rubbish. So I really looked around and I've come across this model um, recommended by Brooklyn Prepper out in the States. And um, unfortunately, I can only find this particular model out in the States and it cost a lot of money getting it here. But I'm so glad I did because food is right up there um, at a top priority list regarding preppers. Food is so important. And... Don't scrimp. Once you've invested in something like this, and you are going to lose it a lot, you don't want to get no cheap stuff. Worth its weight in gold, that piece of kit, it really is. There it is. I know you guys are going to ask um, what it is. And there it is, the food saver. It's the V3250. That's the model. Uh, whether they still do it or not, I don't know. But I just imagine if they did, it'd be a lot cheaper um, than what it was when it first came out. It's a couple of years old now. But... For a nice, really solid piece of kit, mate, it just won't let you down. It's bomb proof. Well, there it is. I'm not sure, um, I should imagine it's held up pretty cool, but you know, there's going to be some people who really want to see it still remains sharp after just going through all that meat like nothing. So, we've just got an average piece there. No problem at all, as you can see. You don't need very expensive sharpened equipment, you really don't. I mean, I've got jackstones, I've got strops, I've got honing rods, I've got diamond sharpeners. But if all you've got to do is just touch the edge up, just use a coffee mug. It's just the ceramic pieces on there. And as you can see on there, it's colourised. All that is, is um, that is the small amount of steel that is just taken off the very tip, sorry, the edge of the blade. And that's all you're interested in. Um, for beginners, how I would, um, um, I don't know, tutor people as it were, start off at a shallow angle and it, you can hear the sounds of it changing as you increase the angle like this until you get to the point where you can feel it actually sharpening rather than just rubbing against smooth metal. So just pretend you're shaving something off and then you've got that right angle then and really keep it still so you're not doing all this just do it nice and slowly turn it over and do the same as i've done earlier and all you're doing in theory is you're just um creating little tiny burrs at the top of the blade and you just finish off on the other side very gently just ding 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 on each side and you can just feel it and it's like sticky sharp i like to call it i call it that because it temporarily sticks to you because it is really really sharp Right now, I could probably shave hairs off of that now. So that's all you need, guys. Don't spend a fortune on sharpening stuff. If it's a touch-up you want, just use a coffee mug. So I hope that's helped, and um, it looks like the 511, I think it's CS2 spear point. It just knocked the crap out of that 14 pound side of beef, so... <laughs> Nice touch. Thanks for watching. Stay funky.